End quote. One more thing. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs keeps his audience guessing. Frequently, but not always, he will leave the audience with just one more thing before he ends a presentation. For example, Jobs announced that he would return as Apple's full-time CEO, dropping the interim from his title as the one more thing at the conclusion of his Macworld presentation on January 5th, 2000. Is the element of surprise that audiences have come to love and expect. Since his audience expects one more thing, Jobs doesn't always deliver. A surprise would fail to surprise if everyone knows it's coming. So in true Steve Jobs fashion, I would like to add just one more thing to this discussion. On June 12, 2005, shortly after a bout with a rare curable form of pancreatic cancer, Jobs gave the com commencement address at Stanford University. It became an internet sensation. It's one of the most popular commencement addresses on YouTube, far more popular than the remarks of other famous commencement speakers such as Oprah, the last lecture author Randy Porsche, or Harry Potter's J.K. Rowling. Jobs crafted the speech using many of the same techniques that make his presentation so electrifying. About the only thing absent that day were slides. The rest is classic Steve Jobs. I have excerpted sections to illustrate how he applied his extraordinary messaging and presentation skills to the now famous speech. I also urge you to watch the full screen on the Stanford website. Today I want to tell you three stories from my life. That's it. No big deal, just three stories. We again see the rule of three, referred to scene five, playing a big role in Jobs' message. He draws a roadmap for his listeners by telling them to expect three stories, not one or four, but three. The structure of the speech itself is strikingly simple. Opening, three stories, conclusion. The first story is about connecting the dots. Here Jobs tells the first of three personal anecdotes. This, is, this one is about his dropping out of Reed College after six months. Jobs said it was scary at first but ultimately worked out because it allowed him to continue to take courses he was interested in, such as calligraphy. Ten years later, he incorporated calligraphy fonts into the Macintosh, connecting the dots. It was beautiful, historical, artically, artistically subtle in a way that science can't capture, and I found it fascinating. Jobs found his passion for simplicity and design at an early age. He discovered his core purpose, a messianic zeal to change the world, and never looked back. Share your passion for your subject, and your enthusiasm will be contagious. My second story is about love and loss. In this section, Jobs talk about falling in love with computers at the age of 20 and sharing that passion with his friend was. He talked about building a $2 billion company in 10 years and then, at the age of 30, being fired by Apple's board of directors. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. Again, passion is a certain theme in Jobs' life. Jobs is convinced that he's successful because he followed his heart, his true passion. There is a lot of truth to it. Remember, none of these presentation techniques will work if you don't have genuine passion for your message. Find the one thing you love to do so much that you can, can't wait for the sun to rise to do it all over again. Once you do, you will have found your true calling. My, my third story is about death. This sentence begins the most poignant section of the speech. Jobs recalls the day doctors told him he had pancreatic cancer. He thought he had three to six months to live. The cancer turned out to be a very rare, curable form of the disease, but the experience left an incredible impression on Jobs. 
No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. Job always has fun. He finds a way to inject humor into a morbid subject. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, in which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. This paragraph is an example of a powerful rhetorical device called anaf anaphora, repetition of the same words in consecutive sentences. Think of Martin Luther King's I have a dream that I have a dream that I have a dream. I have a dream today. Great political speakers from Churchill to King, from Reagan to Obama, have all used anaphora to structure strong arguments. As Jobs demonstrates, this classic sentence structure needs to be reserved for political leaders. It's available to any person who wants to command an audience. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Jobs ends the speech with his headline, his key theme and advice, stay hungry, stay foolish. As we've discussed, Jobs repeated his key theme several times in the presentation. In this case, he repeats, stay hungry, stay foolish, three times in the concluding paragraph. Jobs' speech reveals the secret to his success as a business leader and communicator. Do what you love, view setbacks as opportunities, and dedicate yourself to the passionate pursuit of excellence. Whether it's designing a new computer, introducing new gadget, running Apple, overseeing Pixar, or giving a presentation, Jobs believes in his life's work. This is the last and most important lesson Jobs can teach, the power of believing in yourself and your story. Jobs has followed his heart his whole life. Follow your tobacco to captivate your audience. You'll be one step closer to delivering insanely great presentations.